Welcome to Norfolk, Virginia, the scope for the 43rd edition of the Mideastern Athletic Conference Basketball Tournament 2014 version. Charlie Neal along with John Williams courtside and we tip off this afternoon. The ladies doing battle, the top seed, Hampton University going against the other HU, Howard <laughs> University. Well, you know, they all say who was the real HU, so I expect to see an exciting game because both teams know each other. They've played each other twice throughout the season. Hampton been victorious uh, for the last two games they played against them. Of course, you know, Hampton ride a 15-game winning streak. And one of the things that we know Hampton is trying to achieve, something that has never been done in the history of this conference, and that's win five straight tournament titles. And they're, they've already won the last four. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you know that's definitely what they're going to be uh, looking for. You know, they got two all-conference players so with Bennett and Hamilton. I expect for them to try to contend for it again. Bennett jumping center. She'll be going against Victoria Gonzalez, the sophomore out of Atlanta. Norma Jones, Daryl Humphrey, and Rachelle Jones are our officials for today's game. Twice during the regular season, these two teams met. Howard losing both of those games, 76-64. They lost in Washington, D.C., and on the road, 59-52 against the Lady Pirates of Hampton University. Hamilton in the white jersey. That's the Hampton University home team colors. Yeah. Howard University in the dark blue. Bad toss that time. <laughs> Fishing so. That's All right, Norman. Norman's going to get it. Away. Norman's gonna get it. Uh, lost the contact before we get started already. <laughs> so we may have to bring somebody else in the jump center. <laughs> Young lady coming off the bench is Cabrilla John Johnson. I think she's, they're going to let her uh, get herself together. <laughs> Gonzalez started 21 games for Coach Tennille Adams in her first year at Howard University. Here's Alicia Bennett driving inside. Defreed is the freshman. Kenia Cole. Here's Hamilton from the corner. And it's no good, and it goes off of a Howard University player. And it'll be Hampton University retaining possession under their own basket. Hamilton out high, being guarded by Hellslip. Inside to Bennett. Cole has it in her hands. Lob pass. If she'd have been a little taller, she'd have dunked it. <laughs> yeah, she? without question. I think she got she got a little overexcited today. She have taken her time. She probably would have been able to make an easy shot. And it's going to be Hampton <laughs> University getting the ball. The turnover by Howard University. No score. We're just getting underway in the first minute of play here, from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. 
43rd edition of the MEAC basketball tournament. Turnaround jumper by Bennett is good. That was a good baseline screen for Bennett to come across and square up and knock down a jump shot. He would probably look for a lot of that tonight. Hell slip, 5-5 redshirt freshman from Dumfries, Virginia, running the point guard for Howard University. The three-point attempt is off the mark for Jasmine Hill. Freshman out of Clinton, but an offensive rebound by Howard. It'll reset. Driving down the lane and trying to dish off, and it goes off of Howard University, and it'll be Hampton's ball. Great, great uh, defense that time by, by Hampton University forcing the turnover. So Nicole Hamilton will bring the ball up the floor. As I said, they've won four straight tournament titles, three straight regular season titles. That is Hampton University, the Lady Pirates. 25-4 and four this year, 16-0 and 0 in conference play for the second straight year. They've gone unbeaten against conference opponents. I tell you, they've had some big wins this year against people outside of their conference. Jump ball, possession arrow for Howard University. You're talking about outside the conference and some of the teams that they were able to play. They played Southern Miss. They beat them. They lost to LSU. They were at Texas State. They beat Utah State. They beat Santa Clara. I mean, they beat some, some quality teams. They beat Kansas in overtime, two overtimes, in fact. They beat Drexel University. So, uh, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech, they lost to. Uh, I mean, but they played some quality teams, which gets you ready for this time of the year. You're exactly right. And, uh, and Charlie, you go back and look at They have not lost a game since uh, December the 30th. And the last time, as you mentioned, that they lost the game, that was at Georgia Tech. They lost that one 89-70. And since this, in this year, they've been perfect <laughs> yeah, exactly in 2014. Right. Perfect January. February and March. <laughs> so two free throws missed a chance to put Howard University on the board as Duckett missed a pair of free throws. Wide open shot. Frida's no good. Rebound Howard University. I think right now both teams are just trying to get settled in and, and figure out exactly what they really want to do. Two nothing ball game. We've played almost three minutes in this first half. Hampton University with one field goal. Howard University still looking for his first basket or first points. That's short. Rebound pulled down for Hampton University by Brio Ward, but a steal and a putback for two by Hellslip. So it's all tied at two apiece. Great defense that time. She was able to catch uh, Hampton sleeping a little bit and not knowing that she was right there for the ball. When these two teams played earlier this year, we talked about the score. It was only a seven-point game that separated these two teams the second time that they played. 59-52 was the final score. Howard University going through some nervous jitters down there, turning the ball over as Cole brings it up the floor quickly. DeFridis up off the glass and in. <laughs> That's why she is the rookie of the year. Yeah, you're exactly right. She did a nice sidestep that time to, to loot the defender and able to score. Four to two. Freshman out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Steelton High, second team all conference and you know, rookie of the year in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Down the lane, short jumper goes in for Siobhan Duckett. And David Six wants a timeout. All tied at four apiece. Right here. We'll take one. 16-23, the time remaining. Here in the first half, a tie ball game between Hampton the Lady Pirates, and Howard.
Reserved for you, right? Reserved for you, right? Back here at the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia, the 43rd edition of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Basketball Tournament. Hampton University, the Lady Pirates, the regular season champs for the third straight year. In a battle right now with Howard University, all tied at four apiece as Bennett's shot won't go, and if they're going to stay here. Norma Jones call, blows the whistle, and the Howard foul will be charged against Victoria Gonzalez. Her first, first team foul. Both teams with just one team foul now. Alicia Bennett gets the ball, back down to Cole, and hit from behind as she was driving to the hoop by Jasmine Hill. Well, Charlie, we haven't had many fouls, but within the last three seconds, we've had two fouls. So they are picking up the pace and uh, officials making sure they understand what the call that really is. There's another foul. This <laughs> one is going to go against Sidney Johnson, but at least three different people picked up fouls. <laughs> yeah, <it's just laughs> it wasn't all of the same person. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing right there. <laughs> so at the free throw line, Elisa Bennett, the senior out of Gulf Coast Community College, actually – Started her career or went to high school in the Hampton area, but uh, went away to junior college before Dave Six was able to convince her to come back and play with uh, Nicole. Quite a fine. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Defensive player of the year, Elisa Bennett. 68% uh, free throw shooter, but she hits a pair, and it's a 6-4 ball game, Hampton University on top. Down low, Gonzalez pulls up, jumper, no good. But the offensive rebound that time by Helslip. This shot by Gonzalez from the corner is missed, but there for the putback is Siobhan Duckett, and we're tied at six apiece. Again, we talk about that weak side uh, rebounding, and like I said, you got to assume that your teammate is not going to make every shot and be in position to help out. So it's a turnover for the Lady Pirates of Hampton University who came in Averaging about 13.8 turnovers per ball game. They were plus six in the turnover giveaway department against their opponents. Well, I'll tell you, that, that's something good that you want to look at. From the corner, three-pointer misses everything. And coming up with it is Nicole Hamilton. Hamilton into the front court, drives all the lane, puts it off the glass, no good. But an offensive rebound pulled down by Brio Ward. And the jumper this time is good <laughs> by Cole. And a three-pointer by Miss Cole. Nine to six, three-point ball game. Cole, a junior out of Paint Branch High in Silver Spring, Maryland. Shortest young lady on the floor at 5'4", <laughs> but she hits that big three-pointer. Last time down. Here comes Bennett across to Cole. DeFrida's wide open shot, no good. Rebound, Heslip. Heslip spins in, backs in for two. <laughs> oh, Charlie, what a move. <laughs> and a foul is going to be whistled this time against Jasmine Hill. I believe that's her second. Yeah. Fourth team foul against Howard University. So with two fouls, she'll go to the sideline, being replaced by Cheyenne Brown, one of the – only three players left over from Coach Nikki Geckler's group when they had such success against the same Hampton University team. Yeah, in right. fact, they played in the championship game against each other a year ago. You're exactly right. And, and for some odd reason, they have always been playing each other in the MEC tournament. <laughs> I think that's a big loss for Adam for, for her guard to have to have her second foul and have to come out of the game. And this will be Howard University's ball. Thirteen fifty-eight. That's the time remaining. First half of play. One point ball game, nine to eight. Cole. To three days. Puts up the left hander, no good. Strong follow for the offensive rebound. Here's Cole down the lane, and she is blocked as she goes in 
by Victoria Gonzalez. She thought she lost the <laughs> left eyelash, too. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she really looking for it, too. <laughs> Down the lane. Nice play. DeFritis comes and Cole sees her, and it's an easy two. I'll tell you, that particular time, they mess around and they played man-to-man -man out of bounds, and I'll tell you, that's – a lot of people like playing the man-to-man -man out of bounds because that's what's going to end up happening. He's a layup. And we're going to get a foul. This one is going to be whistled against Georgiana Gilbo. She's in the lineup right now for David Six, the coach of the year again. <laughs> Four years <laughs> in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Cheyenne Brown gets it down to Gonzalez, baseline. Turnover ahead to Frides. And they're going to call a foul. And this is going against Howard. DeFridis will go to the free throw line. And Heslip picks up her second personal foul. Oh, that's actually her first. first. And the fifth team foul. You kind of like the aggressive uh, offer on that play, not to give up the easy basket and force her to go to the free throw line and make free throws. But. That might not be a good thing as well because she's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. Yeah, it's 76%. But she's also second in the conference in threes that she has made this season. She scored in double figures in all but three games. <laughs> and she makes a pair of free throws there. And that's the reason why she's averaging 19 points a game. <laughs> hey, hey, Biggest lead right now for Hampton University is five. They can stretch that. Here's DeFridis going in again. This one a little bit too hard, but she gets back the ball and puts it in. <laughs> now the lead is 7, 15 to 8. Howard University had a defensive rebound, but lost it coming down. DeFridis right there puts it back up for two. That's why you never give up on the play, and you can appreciate the effort that she made that particular time because she easily could have not, uh, you know, just give up on the shot that she missed. So when you look at what these two teams have done this year, this Hampton University team, as I said, started five and two, went 20 and one down the stretch. You know, the last 15 games they've won. They won 15 in a row coming in. As you said, they have not lost in the year 2014. And they scored 90 points. I mean, they put some points up five <laughs> times this year. They had 99 against Morgan, a conference team. And they've had 80 or more points four times. So you figure between those 80 and 90, that's 11, nine times this year that they've scored 80 or more points. Yeah, you're exactly right. And unlikely uh, on uh, Howard University coming to the tournament, they had lost five games in a row coming into the tournament. So, you know, they want to try to get back on the track, and they did by winning their first game in the conference tournament. DeFredes picks up her second personal foul on that play. So she'll go to the sideline. Coming back in will be Nicole Hamilton for Hampton University. Not a bad replacement. <laughs> no, no. Could be a lot worse. Yes. You could put me in the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coach Six is really upset about that call. Yeah, he didn't like that call at all. But – and if he was ahead by 100, he'd be making the <laughs> you, same. You're exactly right. <laughs> he'd be feeling the same way. Now, we talked about people that are animated on the sidelines, so he's definitely one of the ones that will do that. Here's a steal by Cole. Cole in the front court puts it up easy, but misses. Brill Ward can't get it to fall. Good. Brown had it. Cheyenne Brown for Howard University. Heslip. Working against Cole, double team, and now a turnover for Howard. Timeout, 11.55, that's the time remaining. We're in the first half of this contest. 15 to eight is our score.
back uh, back to action 15 to 8 here 11 48 to go here in the first half that shot for Cheyenne Brown does it fall Hamilton reverses it back out Cole goes down the lane over to Bennett Bennett puts up the shot misses everything and Bennett follows <laughs> Actually, it was Hamilton, Hamilton put up the shot, yeah, and Bennett was happening on the opposite side, on the weak side, grabbed the ball. And it's a 16 foul against Howard University that will send Elisa Bennett to the free throw line. Pretty good free throw shooting team, this Hampton squad. Right now, anyhow, for the season, not that great. Only 61%, but they ranked first in the conference in about four categories. Scoring, scoring margin, rebounding, and turnover margin. <laughs> so that's not a bad, uh, if you can outscore everybody, it doesn't matter what else you, you do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you outscore, without question, you're going to win. 16 to 8 is our score. Hampton University with their biggest lead of the afternoon. An eight-point advantage. Cheyenne Brown has her shot blocked. And it's Bennett with the block, or Cole with the block. <laughs> and Bennett finishes. <laughs> I thought that might have been a foul, but, you know, that's why she's the defensive player of the year. Ten-point lead. Three-pointer rims out for Hellslip. And a foul is going to be whistled against Cabrilla Johnson. Well, they call it out of bounds. Oh, they're calling it out of bounds. I thought it was a foul. Now we got a break that time. They did. <laughs> Five-second violation almost and wisely. Siobhan Duckett calls a timeout, not being able to get the ball inbounds. So that's a 30-second timeout. Howard University will take it. And we talk about leading scorers in the ball game so far. DeFridas, Tate DeFridas with eight points. Lisa Bennett has five after that last free throw. She is two of three at the, uh, three of four at the free throw line. So 10 rebounds uh, for Howard, who have done a pretty good job on the boards. 12 for Hampton University, but I think the telling stat for Howard, they have actually shot better in the contest so far, like 33% than uh, Hampton University, but Hampton is the one that has the 10-point advantage. Well, I tell you, this is a critical possession for them right here. They definitely need to score here, being down 10 already with 10 minutes to go here. You don't want Hampton to get too much of a lead on you here. Now, it's always hard to fight back against a team such as Hampton University who, once they put the knife in you, they, they twist it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about them. They don't let up. Cole down the lane over to Bennett. Bennett pulls up back to Cole. She measures the three. Step back, no good. And it'll stay here going off of the hands of Howard's well, again, the weak, shy Heslip. Again, the weak side, uh, weak side uh, offense, the defensive rebound, and haven't been there for, for Howard University. Back into the Hampton University lineup, State Defridas, 
Cole will go to the sideline. Also in for Hampton University is Georgiana Gilbo. Sidney Johnson picks up the foul. 17 fouls now against Howard. At the free throw line once again. With five points is Bennett. She makes the front end of one and one. The lead is now 11 with 10 13 to go in the first half. I tell you, Charlie, the fear that uh, Coach Six is rolling the dice with the fear is, you know, she already has two fouls and, and she's back into the ball game. I guess he knows his players better than we do. <laughs> when you talk to him, and, you know, we talk about all the success that he's had since coming over as the head coach here. Number one, the fact that he's been able to stay here and nobody's really, you know, <laughs> you would think some of the big schools would be coming after him, but he's very happy where he is. And, you know, he's the type of coach some coaches uh, re build right he reloads that's exactly right <laughs> it's, it's a big difference right it really is. he has exactly a lot of bullets right. in his gun You're exactly right <laughs> he just has to put some uh, bullets he just got to put some more in his gun yeah a lot on reserve yeah <laughs> and that's going to be the third personal foul i believe against sydney johnson and one with nine minutes to go in the first half you can't afford to have three personal fouls but Sydney just picked up her third. She only fouled out of two games all season long. And completing the three-point play is Elisa Bennett. And the lead is 14 now, 22 to 8. Well, yes, she yet remains in the game with those three personal fouls. So this is going to be crucial for them down the stretch here. Here's a turnover for Howard University. That's number eight for them in the ball game. Now this game can, can get ugly here. If, um, Quickly. <laughs> it can. <laughs> Hamilton will try a three. It's an air ball. Gonzalez with the rebound for Howard. Has slipped into the front court. Into the corner. Gonzalez goes inside, partially blocked, no call. Here come the Pirates, the Lady Pirates of Hampton. Brielle Ward, wide open, nice pass that time <laughs> from Gilbo. Uh, great penetration that time by Gilbo inside the Ward to score the left-hand layup. 16-point lead. But Howard answers at the other end. And that was Heslip, Tisha Heslip. Tate DeFritis working against Gonzalez in the corner. Boy, that's staying with it, isn't it? Yes, it is. They had three offensive rebounds on that one possession, and Elisa Bennett finishes it. I'll tell you, size took over that time. That's why I was able to keep the ball alive, even in missing it, because they would keep tapping around to get the ball to where it needs to go. Stayed on the offensive end until somebody put it in the basket. Nice spinning move. The dish off to Gonzalez. She goes inside, and she's going to go to the line as she is fouled by Brielle Ward. The red shirt sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland. Timeout on the floor with 7.44 to go. And it's a 16-point lead for Hampton University. But when we come back, we'll see Victoria Gonzalez at the free throw line.
Back here at the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia, we have a 26-10 ball game. Gonzalez for Howard University going to the free throw line. Gonzalez so far in the ball game has not scored. 0 for 4 from the field. She is a 62% free throw shooter. And that one rims off. 11th in the conference in field goal percentage, which, which is surprising why she has not been able to score in this ball game. Not only that, too, uh, that was their first free throw they've made so far in today's game. So she does get one to fall. Hamilton lost it. Goes right into the hands of Duckett. Duck it down the lane, gets it in the corner. That was close to a travel there for Howard University. The three from the corner is good for Jasmine Hill, who's shooting 27% from three-point range. She has a much-needed field goal for Howard at that time because they were really down. On the line. It'll be a turnover. Tyler Hobgood coming in out of Oxford, North Carolina. Started a career at the University of Miami. Got a chance to see her play earlier this year, right after she joined the team. Actually played the first game for Hampton University back on December 21st against Kansas State. I'll tell you, Charlie, she was not in the game for her long. No, she wasn't. <laughs> Gonzalez hits from outside that time. And it's a 10-point game. So they've cut into that 16-point deficit to make it a 10-point game with 6.35 to go. We're in the first half here at the scope in Norfolk. Pass inside, doesn't go. And the tip back to Howard University. Right. Howard could cut it to single digits right now. Cheyenne Brown, the long jumper, no good. Cole comes out with it for Hampton. Hamilton pulls up for the jumper, a two-pointer, no good. Cheyenne Brown with the rebound. Well, I tell you, Charlie, right now, Hamilton's really struggling from the field. She's over eight from the field for today, and, you know, she has to get it going if they want to really keep this te team going here. Six minutes to go, first half. Along the baseline, too hard. They're going to stay here on this end. Siobhan Duckett trying to go inside. Is that on Ward? It's her second Brielle foul. Ward picks up her second, not a shooting foul. Cheyenne Brown misses inside. Gonzalez trying for the rebound. Cheyenne Brown gets it back on the feed that time from Heslip. And it's an eight-point ball game, 26 to 18. Charlie on a Howard's on a 7-0 run right now. They certainly are. They were down 26 to 10. Actually, they're on an eight to nothing <laughs> run. Okay. <laughs> I missed the free throw somewhere in there. <laughs> Feed. That's something you know they practice that. Without you can see that. <laughs> Heslip for Howard University. 5.17 to go. Gonzalez inside. Across the lane for two. Wow. And you see why Gonzalez, as we mentioned earlier, 11th in field goal percentage, and she made a great move across the lane that time. That was. Uh, I mean, she took the ball right at Bennett that particular time. And and you know, use her body to shield away from keeping up from blocking the shot. So a 10 to nothing run for Howard University has pulled them to within six. They were down by 16. They were down 26 to 10. And like you said, both teams right now, uh, you know, trying to make this game competitive. That's what Howard University is trying to do right now. Stay focused, not to get too much super out of the game here. Oh, let's see if Howard can continue this comeback that they've launched here late in the first half. Howard, 
Tate DeFridis from the corner. Hamilton yeah. still having problems hitting shots. Howard University can cut into the deficit even more. They can make it a four-point game. Gonzalez gets it back out. Battle for the loose ball. DeFreitas comes out with it. Here come the Pirates. Into the front court. Down the lane. DeFreitas is fouled by Heslip. And Charlie, I think that, that might have been an anticipated call there because it appears that the, the defensive player just ran by her, and, and I think the offensive player thought she was going to get hit. <laughs> exactly and right. she did a good acting job. She that did. is Tate DeFridis, and she threw up a prayer, and it was answered with a whistle. <laughs> that, that was a great Oscar right there, Charlie. <laughs> Freshman out of Harrisburg, Steelton High, second team all-conference at the free throw line, shooting 76% from the stripe. Her second shot is good. So Tate DeFridis, 4-4 at the free throw line. She has 10 points for the Lady Pirates of Hampton. So they break that scoring drought that they've been on for quite a while when they were ahead by 16 points. Exactly right. 4.05 to go before halftime. Gonzalez puts up the jumper. Good. Great pick and roll that time allowed her able to score those two points. Good block by Gonzalez of Bennett. Shot inside. Gonzalez with the block. She had 24 blocks during the regular season. 3.30 to go. Six-point ball game. Here's Gonzalez travel. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. 326 to go. Six point ball game, 28-22, Hampton University. But they've been in a fight here so far with the Lady Bison of Howard. Back here at the Scope in Norfolk, Charlie Neal, John Williams courtside, 43rd edition of the Mideastern Athletic Conference Basketball Tournament. Hampton University, four-time defending tournament champs on top of Howard University, 28-22. The question is, who is the real HU today? <laughs> and so far, Howard University has given the other HU <laughs> a run for their money. Yeah, you're exactly right. Now, we're looking here at the stat sheets right here in, in Howard field goal percentage is better than Hampton right now, 35 to 25 percent. And that makes a difference. Eight turnovers for Howard, five for Hampton University, but as you said, it's uh, it's been a pretty good run. A 16-point lead at one point by Howard University or Hampton University erased with a 10 to nothing run to cut it to six. And, and looking at a couple other numbers here, we see that they have uh, Hampton has 13 offensive rebounds along with 13 defensive rebounds. But the difference in the ball game is 
Howard one for four from the free throw line. Hampton nine out of 11. So if you look at the point totals, that's showing you what the difference in the game is right now. Well, they're having some issues with the game clock, shot clock. <laughs> they're trying to reset both. Now they have the game clock reset. They have the shot clock reset. So now we're going to play basketball. <laughs> that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Turn the clocks off. <laughs> Bring Dean Smith back and do the four corners. <laughs> we have a two to four, four I, to two I, ball I game. I used to love those games. <laughs> <laughs> Cole along the baseline gets it back out to DeFridis. Take DeFridis. Shot clock down at two seconds. Cole has to take the shot and it's off the mark. They had to take the shot. Shot clock was running out on them. Jasmine Hill brings it inbounds, gives it off to Heslip. Jasmine out of Clinton, Maryland with the Ratsville High. Heslip from Dumfries, Virginia, from Potomac High. Dishes off to Cheyenne Brown, baseline, doesn't fall. And the rebound by Lisa Bennett. And a turnover, <laughs> double dribble. You know, you wonder how you double drill and nobody's guarding you. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you wonder, you know, what is what are the players thinking about when that happens? So again, Howard University not taking advantage of the mistakes that Hampton has made the last couple times down the floor. This is a long jumper that's off the mark, but the offensive putback is there for Duckett. It is, and I tell you, Charlie, the momentum has really changed and, and to Howard's favor right now because the uh, last few minutes, the only thing that Hampton been able to manage is a couple free throws. Four-point ball game right now. Howard University with the defensive board. Down to the two-minute mark in the first half. It's a four-point ball game, and Cheyenne Brown can't handle the pass. That was a great look that time, though. <laughs> Turnover number nine for Howard. Under two minutes to go before halftime. Four-point ball game, 28-24. Howard trailing Hampton University. Cole puts it up. No good. Cheyenne Brown with the rebound for Howard. They can cut it to two. And the pass off of the hands. Of Cabrera Johnson. I think that was a, that pass was a little hard at that time and uh, probably caught off guard. And honestly, the reason why she had to make that pass because Bennett was right there to throw it in the stand probably as she taking the shot. Heslip goes to the sideline to see a majors, a sophomore out of Norfolk, Virginia's Lake Taylor High comes in. I believe more so for defensive purposes. Here's Cole. Minute 19 to go. Bennett. Cole shot clock down to seven seconds this time. And Cole with the runner off the glass. Yeah. Makes it 30 to 24. Yeah, first field goals in quite a few minutes for Hampton University. Yeah, they've had some couple scoring droughts here in this contest so far. Under a minute to go before halftime. Howard University looked like at one point they were going to lay down and die. They were down 16 points, but they have stayed right in there and fought back. They really have. And a foul is going to be whistled against Elisa Bennett. It's going to be out of bounds. I think it's only their sixth personal foul of the half, so they're going to have to take it out of bounds see what they'll do. So 41 seconds on the game clock. 11 second difference between the game and the shot clock right now for Howard University. And that ball off the back of the hands of Bennett as it was coming in bounds. Just by the fact that she's tall and had her hands up, the ball never got to the intended player for Howard University. So now Hampton University, they're going to have to take the shot. It's still about a nine-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock as Cole drives the line, puts it off the glass. She is fouled, and she'll go to the line as Majors picks up her first personal foul. Child, before uh, Cole go to the line, you wonder why Howard didn't inbound the ball to the first player that became open over there, and it would have eliminated that turnover they had. Cole with three points 
her first free throws of the night. Maybe that's why. <laughs> they don't want her at the line. 59% from the charity stripe. She even had to take a smile at herself for, yeah, for missing everything. Exactly at least right. you got to hit something. <laughs> yeah. Even if you clang it off the back of the glass. And the second one looked good. <laughs> Seven-point game, 31-24. So Hampton University will take a 30-second timeout. 19 seconds is the time remaining. Before the break here at halftime, 31-24 is our score. This Howard University team came in as the number nine scoring team in the conference. Third and block shots because of a young lady by the name of Victoria Gonzalez and fifth and free throw percentage. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I tell you what, this is a big possession here. We'll see if Howard will. Play for the last shot and not allow Hampton to come back down and extend his lead like they have right here. I'll be very patient if I was a Howard University right now on this shot coming up here. Howard got to this round today by beating North Carolina Central yesterday, 74-59. Cheyenne Brown shot the three, doesn't go. Battle for the loose ball on the floor. Jump ball, alternating possession arrow will favor Howard or Hampton University, 4.9 seconds to go. That's what we were talking about. You didn't want them to get their hand on the ball again. They came out and jacked up a shot. Still with five seconds still left on the clock. And the lead is seven right now for Howard Uni or Hampton University. And Hamilton pulls up, has been struggling shooting today, and she still is struggling in terms of getting her shot to fall. But more importantly, a seven-point lead for the four-time defending MEAC tournament champs. We're at halftime, 31-24, Hampton over Howard. 